everyone. Uh, welcome to this episode of Ahsoka the Geek, and we have a special guest star, Mr. Rob Dunbar. Look at him. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for joining me, Rob. First of all, I'm saying your name right, Rob Dunbar, right? Yes. Okay, Correct. good. All right. And it's not Rob Toys, it's Rob D Toys. Yeah, kind of like Rob. Like, there was a Rob Toys, so yeah. I added the D, so it's kind of like my name, obviously, but it's also right. like I'm gonna rob the toys. I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you should do your logo with like a little bandit. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Something like that. I mean, it might be a little much for a small logo, but still, that'd be awesome. You know. Yeah. Well, dude, thanks so much for joining me, man. I appreciate it, especially on a weekend. So I'm oh. really excited to to talk to you. Um, I want to kind of start off with just hearing about you, hearing about kind of where you grew up, what you got, in, what got you in action figures. Just take, just take me back, Rob. Take me back to young Rob, <laughs> what young Rob was into. Not that you're not young and good looking, but the, the younger Rob. Right, right. So uh, I'm from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and uh, I grew up in a small town, Mountville, inside Lancaster County. Um, just kind of, you know, farm. Most people associate it with Amish. So, but uh, I grew up, I was born in 1978. Uh, by the time I hit like, 81 I was three so I was starting to already getting into like action figures and stuff uh, my parents blessed me with m many toys oh that's uh, great so like I remember you know He-Man Thundercats I mean just to go through all the toy lines I mean my parents god bless them they gave me everything that I they ever wanted mm -hmm. um so like I had He-Man Thundercats uh the Secret Wars from Marvel uh the Superpowers from Kenner, um, you know, He-Man, Thundercats, Silverhawks, Centurions, uh, Jason, the Wheeled Warriors, Man. Um, Mask, Cops, uh, I even did Darkwing Duck, uh, Sky Commandos, did I say Centurions? Because that's did. one of my favorites, okay. Um, Ghostbusters, like a whole plethora of, you know, figures, and then from an early age, like, I just stuck to that superhero thing. Like, I loved all the action figures and stuff, but it was, like, the core was my favorite was superheroes. Um, obviously, the Christopher Reeve Superman, as you know, like, was a big part of our youth. Yeah. And then the, the Super Friends, I mean, I love that stuff. Um, Adam West stuff, like, I took it with a grain of salt. I, like, I loved it, but I didn't, like, need to have anything from it. You know what I mean? Yeah um just kept uh i was into like drawing so i kind of actually wanted to become a comic book artist later on no kidding. Uh, yeah and i'd say like seventh eighth grade is when i started collecting right around right before nightfall and death of superman and so i i really got into that and that steamrolled like my whole comic career of collecting and then from that point i was just like drawing all the time and I wanted to go to the Andy Kubert, you know, school or the Kubert school. Yeah. Yeah. So um, then I was, as I got older, I was like, okay, if this doesn't pan out, what is going to be left for me as a career? So then I started thinking like, okay, well, maybe I go into graphic design. So then that's the path that I took. I, I kept collecting. There was a point, I think, in the late 90s, I stopped altogether, toys and comics. Yeah. And then... Because at that time, I was collecting Marvel and DC. And as you know, like, you had to collect, like, all the X-Men. Right. Yeah, to collect it all. So it, I was spending, like, $70 a week on, on comics, let alone action figures. You know, that was a whole separate issue. Um, and it got too much. So I just quit cold turkey. I mean, I was working at a comic book store, too. So oh, wow. Um, then when I got back into it, I was like, okay. I'm going to choose a side because I can't do both. Who do I love more? And I always gravitated more towards DC because of that Superman, Batman, you know, Justice League type stuff. Yeah. Uh, I never stopped collecting action figures. Like I would keep them in the plastic containers that they came in. I just would peel off the backing board and I would shove them into my dresser. My dresser was filled with toys, not even clothes. And oh, then... Yeah. Uh, I had more toys in my closet and underneath my bed. Um, but then, you know, the mom purge comes and she 
just destroys, <laughs> it takes away everything. Oh and man. So the only things that I kept from my youth were my silver hawks because I kept them close to me. And then the Batman from 1989 on. And then it was up to me from because I was getting into my early teens. My mom's like, I'm not buying you toys anymore. And so like I would ride I would ride my bike to like Kmart and I would just like just buy Batman, you know, the yeah. Dark Knight collection and, and stuff like that. And then, as you know, as we get older, it's a little bit more, like, weird to, like, go into a toy aisle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, yeah. yeah, I mean, there were still KB Toys and Toys R Us and stuff, and you're just feeling, like, a little awkward trying to, like, find what you need. Yeah. Um, there was no eBay at the time. That came a little later. And then once eBay hit, I mean, that was great because then you could, like – the world opened up to you and you can right. start getting even more stuff um but yeah so i just i went from i i was getting dc direct a little bit but when the mattel right after that batman line the the dc superheroes hit yeah i really gravitated toward this act because i really liked it. it the price point was good and you could find it in local retailers instead of just the comic shops and so I gravitated towards uh, Mattel, and I love the sculpts. Like, I mean, the early stuff was really detailed, and then once they did the DC Classics, it kind of got watered down, but it was still a great wave, and they just they hit it out of the park, but I was still collecting. And most of the stuff from DC Direct was either Superman, Aquaman, or Green Lantern, because yeah. that's just my favorites. So... so before we go on, I kind of want to take a step back, and you, you mentioned the 80s, right? You mentioned yeah. Mass, Silverhawks, Superpowers. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because uh, you and I both know now there's such a resurgence in a lot of those. Like, we're seeing G.I. Joe, Ninja Turtles, mm -hmm. uh, really detailed, expensive new figures coming out. Yeah. What do you think it is about, the, like, is it just because that's when we grew up? And it was the cartoons or for you like what was it about the 80s and why were you collecting all those lines what what influenced i mean maybe you go back way back here but what influenced yeah. you buying toys when you were a kid okay so i mean i'm sure some of the everybody knows maybe um there was you couldn't in the 70s and whatever you couldn't have a, a cartoon to sell toys right right so that got lifted in the 80s and then you saw like toys for everything for all the cartoons and they were making cartoons to sell toys yeah um i never i didn't realize that so in the 70s you couldn't have no cartoons. star wars i think was the start of it they were like okay we're gonna open the floodgates yeah and it just you know went from there but yeah i mean like you know robocop had a cartoon to sell the toys you know darkwing yeah. duck had toys transformers obviously was made to sell toys so it's kind uh, of like everything you were into on tv the cartoons yeah and like i, I for. Yeah, like I had that fall schedule that came out, and then yeah. I would like map out like what I'm gonna watch, and then like figure out because you know there was a, we had to record it if we weren't gonna watch watch it and stuff. And I remember the Bart Sears, I think it was Bart Sears, uh, Superman. I loved the animation in that cartoon. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. Um, and bro, I think you that, have siblings? Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have. Well, I have two older step. Uh, brother and sister but they never lived with me okay. and then i had my brother and then my sister was six uh my half sister was um six years younger than me so my my brother was only a year and a day younger than me yeah. so we would like you know get up early i remember like starcom was on at like 6 30 in the morning that we would get up super <laughs> early just to watch it so uh, and did he collect toys too? Did you guys have to share your toys, or was it more you? I'm not a good sharer. <laughs> like, like the way that my parents started it out was that I was always the hero, and my brother always had the villains. Yeah. And then my brother was like, "I don't always want to be the villain, you know? Like, I want to yeah. <laughs> play with your E-Man." And I'm like, "No, but can I have your Skeletor?" And he's like, "Yeah." yeah. <laughs> so, oh, like, man. I was not a good sharer. So you, you have a pretty big family. So you have your, your brother who he's a year and a half older or young, younger, I'm sorry. Younger. Younger. Then you had your sister and she's six years younger than you, right? So you're the you're the older you're the oldest. Yeah. The of my mom, I'm the oldest. Gotcha. So do you remember like your parents? Did you have to 
just beg them for your toys or were they just like, hey, whatever you want? Or was it, was it pretty easy? I, mean, I think the 80s were really good to my family um, yeah. for working and everything. So like we pretty much got like if I asked for it, I pretty much got it. Like that's awesome for for birthdays, but mostly you know birthdays and Christmas were obviously the big. But there would be like times where stuff would trickle in. I remember like I wasn't feeling well in later. I think I had the chicken pox actually. Like in and Ninja Turtles was out, yeah. and I'm like, I was I, I had them everywhere, and my mom came back with the party wagon from Ninja oh. Turtles. And she's like, I know you're not feeling well, but I hope this brightens your day. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, you got awesome parents, dude. You must have yeah. been a good kid, you yeah. know. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you this: Your parents, like, is your is your mom and your dad are they geeky in any way? Are they into any of this stuff? Uh, no, 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 not at all. Wow. No. So this this is all sprung from the cartoons, like you know, Super, Superman the movie. That's where all of your your geekiness comes from, itself. Yeah, yeah, and, and like I had books as a kid that were like superhero based. Like, you know, for, ki- you know, for younger kids and coloring books and stuff. And I remember, like, really gravitating towards that. And then, of course, like, you know, Spider-Man and his amazing friends, like, that whole thing, the Incredible Hulk TV series. I mean, it was great to be, like, a kid in our generation, you know? And I think that's what the thing is with our generation is that I felt like an outsider because, like you, I, don't ha- I didn't have any friends that collected comic books or action figures. And everybody thought I was weird. But then, like, as you get older and you meet people like you, you realize there's a whole generation of us who felt the exact same way. Yeah. I think that's what bonds us together. Absolutely. And, and so I think the nostalgia comes from that. It's our generation that had so much to offer because I don't think the – I mean, the 70s had, you know, their toys and stuff. But the 80s really was, like, the toy boom. Yeah. And so, like, I, I feel like you even mentioned was I totally forgot about, you know yeah. what I mean? You're going through your list, you know, and that's really true. Then, then so you had the 80s, you you had a ton of stuff you're buying. The 90s, you sort of, you know, you're getting older, you're in high I, school. The college. Batman animated series, definitely. I, yeah. I, I still have it. I got to bust it out so I can take some photos of those. Dude, so do, was there ever a, a point where you're, you're thinking, like, oh, I should stop buying toys because I'm not a kid anymore. Do you remember having yes. those thoughts? Yeah. I re- then that's when I stopped. Like, yeah. uh, so like I was like, okay, I can't afford it because you know, I'm working a job and all of my money is going to my car and yeah. my comic books and this addiction really. Right. And, <laughs> and so I just quit cold Turkey and I was like, you know, I got to grow up. I got, you know, if I'm going to find a girlfriend, like I need yeah. To like, you know, not be so weird. You know? right. <laughs> Back then, that's the whole thought process, you know. Yeah, I mean? absolutely, dude. So, I, you know, I, I think I went like a couple years, and then like, my wife, she was with me in the toy aisle. Just, you know, I was like, hey, you know, we're here. I think it was even Target, and I saw like the, the DC superheroes from Mattel, and I'm like, I really like this. I wanna, I wanna pick it up. Yeah. And that was the gateway to get back in the the toy aspect of it. Like I I got back into like the comics a little earlier than that, but yeah. and then from there it just like boomed. It took off and um, it exploded. So how old were you when you met your wife? I was 24. Okay, so and then so that's right when DC Universe Classics. Those are the ones. What did she think when you first started to buy action figures again? She knew like okay, so. This is going to sound really bad, but I was living at home when I met her, right? That's all right. So, like, I paid off my art school and yeah. everything, so I, my parents were great about letting me do that. Um, my bedroom had, like, you know, the, the Batman posters yeah. above my bed and, and, like, band posters. So, like, I mean, she kind of knew when she first met me. Like, I explained, like you know, our interests and stuff like that. And she yeah. always let me be me. And I think that's what made me fall hard for her because I had other girlfriends that were like, that's kind of weird, whatever. Yeah. So, but, but Beth was always like, yeah. That's awesome, dude. I mean, that's great. I mean, I have the same thing, you know, it's great to have yeah. a supportive spouse or significant other who uh, lets you be you. I yeah. mean, uh, they probably prefer we spend our money on other things maybe. Oh, yeah. But, uh, but she you know. always said to her friends, like, Hey, he's not drinking it away. 
there you go. <laughs> so, like, you know, you could be just waste. And that was the one thing for me. Like, yeah, like, who doesn't like to drink every now and then? But sure. it's like, I would rather spend my money on tangible things that I can keep or even possibly sell than just eat it or drink it away. Yeah, absolutely, dude. You know, and it, it's safe because that's where you are all the time. You're at home taking right. pictures of your action figures. You know what I mean? Right. So it's great. You don't have to worry about you. Okay, exactly. so you're... So you, so at some point you had the lull in collecting, you got back into it, you bought some DC Direct, but Mattel was your, your focus. Right. So um, how come, so you kind of mentioned it earlier that you had to make a decision on what you were going to collect. Right. Like looking back now, do you wish you would collect more from like DC and Marvel as well as Mattel? Or what do you, what do you think about just kind of focusing on one line? Well, like towards the tail end of my collecting prior to my, you know, break, I was doing like the the uh, the Toy Biz X-Men yeah. and stuff like that. So I have all like the 90s X-Men stuff, but it's just that that six inch line from Mattel and the DC Direct was like really great because you could pose them and stuff. And I wasn't quite into photography at that point. That yeah. came a little later, but uh, I just remember like these things look like right off the page yeah. and so that made me gravitate towards you know dc direct and mattel and i just didn't like i love marvel but i don't love them enough to want to collect anything from them so i gotcha yeah it's all very similar man like I, I was into the toy biz stuff as well the x-men i bought all that the spider-man figures i think because yeah. of the the cartoons yeah you know? but and that's another thing i wanted to ask you like why do you collect like, what is it about an action figure today, even especially today, right? You're yeah. older. There's so many hobbies you could choose from. What is right. it about buying an action figure that brings you satisfaction and joy? Like, what is it for you? That's a great question. Um, I think for me, it is like a tangible object of what you grew up reading. Yeah. And like, you can pose it, you can look around 360 Whereas before, you're just looking at the artwork, whether it be, you know, you know, Dan Jurgens or Todd Grimmett, who were like my favorite 90s artists. I mean, you're getting pieces that look like that. Um, I don't know. I just have so much love for this subgenre of, of yeah. stuff. So I don't know. It's just the designs are great. I love being able to pose it. And especially now that I took to photography, I mean, it's... It's great. I mean, I'm getting to use my two passions together. And if I could figure out a way to make that like a full time job, I would. <laughs> You'll get there. No, yeah. man, it's I agree. Like, yeah, for some reason, you know, reading comic books and then owning a figure from that comic book, there's yeah. something satisfying about it. There's something like I, I, I can't explain it either. There's something I really enjoy about it also. So I, and then there's yeah. I mean, you, you definitely get like certain toy lines especially from like movies or tv shows where it's like you kind of look back and you're like eh, i didn't really need that yeah so um but then they just get replaced with other figures and stuff i mean it's never ending what do you do in that scenario like when do you like i remember a few months ago i bought that delorean and you said dude don't buy it I remember i texted you yeah I'm like, hey, should i buy this and guess what rob where is that delorean it's in the garage oh I, no i put it for a few weeks i enjoyed it but i'm like you know, it wasn't part of my core collecting line, so now yeah. it's in the garage. Like, what do you – do you fall into that trap sometimes? Or what's the most recent thing that you were buying that now you kind of like, oh, why did I buy this? Well, I don't know. Um, like, the DC Direct Arkham and the CW stuff. Yeah. While I like it, it's just not comic book-ish enough. And, yeah. like, especially with, like, you know, movies that – you buy like Green Lantern and stuff and the movie doesn't do well, it kind of puts like a bad taste in your mouth, but I still enjoy it. And there's, sure. it's still on my shelf, but it's just like, I don't know. I feel like there was a time when Arkham was just in your face all the time right? from Mattel and from DC and whatever. And you know, when it's pushed that hard, I feel like I just need to step back. You know what I mean? So, no, I feel you, man. Like, especially with Arkham, I, I never really, bought any of the figures until the last year i've gone back and bought a few that i kind of like but i think i'm like you if it's not from the source material yeah a little bit more of a purist in that way yeah you know, 
But the DC TV stuff, they have some really, I mean, that oh, Winter Green one you did was phenomenal, you know? Yeah, I don't um, think I'm going to get rid of the Flash or, or Reverse Flash. I really enjoy those. And the Deathstroke is fantastic. Um, right. So well, let me ask you this. Um, the uh, Now, what are your, your focuses now with your collecting? Like, what lines are you collecting? Yeah. Kind of, what, what are your favorite lines right now? Um, DC Essentials, bar none. Yeah. They are I see absolutely. that flash back there. I see the. Yeah. Uh, I see it right there. <laughs> yeah, the the reverse flash was my holy grail for me. Like just getting it at retail price after the fact. Like I came in a little bit late. Well, I shouldn't say that because I was getting Superman, Batman along the way and stuff. But there were certain figures that I was just passing on because I was like, do I need it? No. But that was like, I was photographing, but I wasn't thinking about photographing like certain figures and stuff because if you remember my first year i was very sparse like i spread it out like i wasn't consistent at all i know it's funny because i'm looking at your page from the first year yeah I just, you know in preparation of this call and you're right is sort of i mean the pictures dude are still so phenomenal Thank like you. the thundercast you have oh man and this was february 3rd 2019 like wow like yeah dude freaking beautiful pictures man um, but I'm sorry, I, I totally derailed you. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. let's go. Yeah, I mean, DC Direct for me, and of course, I I really loved the Mattel, and then when they stopped, it was like, okay, well, now what are we going to do? Yeah. And McFarlane, we heard about, and I had the old Spawn figure, so I was like, well, is it going to be like that, or is it going to be, like, better? And then we saw what they were coming out with, and I was like, well, holy crap, this is amazing, like, but do I want to go down this rabbit hole of like, you know, it's kind of like when I was collecting uh, Star Wars, like in the in the 90s when they had that power of the force. I started and I had the entire line and then it just got more and more and more. And you're like, I can't keep up with this. So I'm, I got to be allowed. I'm not a Star Wars fan like that. I love Star Wars, but I'm so glad I don't buy them. Because yeah. it's, it's insane how many yeah. figures there are. Yeah, so, so I try not to be a completist, but I'm so close to finishing my DC Essentials, a sec for the, the Watchmen. I just was never a Watchmen fan. No. Like, I, I, I like the movie, yeah. and and I even read the book, but, like, okay, so people are probably going to hate on me, hopefully not, but, like, I never was into a Watchmen, and I never really liked the crime syndicate mm. with Ultraman and stuff. Yeah. Like, no, like, it just, I don't know. It just never. It's all right. You can't like everything. Yeah. Did you read Doomsday Clock? Did you give that a try? Yes, I did. And it, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. Especially but not enough like, to, like, inspire you to buy the figures. No, not really. I mean, just because, like, they just don't hold any... I think it's just because, like, the Justice League itself, and even the cartoon of the Justice League kind of reiterated that, like, that core. And I think that's the difference between DC and Marvel, is that DC bases everything on the superhero aspect and not so much of, like, the civilian Right. Whereas Marvel's kind of the other way around. Not yeah. that DC doesn't, but I don't honestly... I mean, it's cool that there's a Clark Kent, but I want to see Superman fight. I don't really care about the other stuff. And that's that's what makes me a DC fan. Gotcha. Like, I want to see the action. Well, so, I think you have a very healthy approach to the action figures. Uh, you know, not being completist. But let me ask you, how much is your Instagram now influencing you in uh, in that yeah. <laughs> a lot <laughs> right yeah i mean i know we've talked about this how sometimes i'll buy an action figure just because okay that's going to make a great shot because i have these other characters exactly. whereas i would never think like that before because i wouldn't care about taking a picture of it so uh, we'll talk about that a little bit how has your your instagram been influencing you yeah like so i remember at at I did it for a year, very sparse. And then from January of this year, I said, okay, I'm going all in. I'm going to put a figure out every day. And what, that's what, what drove you to do that? Like, so you were doing it sparsely for a while. You had, yeah, you had pictures. Well, you I had two accounts. Like, okay, I still have my, my photography account. Uh, that's just like portraits and, and weddings and stuff like that. Um, but I wasn't really getting any traction on that. And I really had this passion for toys and superheroes and i was like well why don't i just you know catalog it you know just take pictures yeah. you were a huge influence on me because oh, i loved you. your your stuff and your collection is just massive and i was like i want to do this like i i'm gonna do this 
Um, so I got the drive from you seeing all the beautiful art that you put out. And then I just was like, okay, I'm going to do this and see how far I get. And then you get into like halfway through the year and you're like, what if I don't, you get into the secondary characters that people don't really care about, or you feel like you're going to run out of ideas and stuff. And I guess I can always try to do dioramas at some point, but like I do my composites, but the composites don't really take, you know, they don't get enough traction, I guess. I don't know. It, it's don't know not, why, but they're freaking amazing, your composites, like, you know? What's, um, so with Instagram specifically, you know, once you started be, be more consistent with it, you know, cataloging it, did the experience of Instagram and social media change for you at that yeah. point? Yeah, definitely. Because um, I was going and I remember, for, I think it was around, yeah, it was around my birthday, like end of March, yeah. that I finally hit what I was, like I was at 360 something. It was the same as what my other page was doing. Yeah. And I surpassed that and I'm like, okay, I'm getting some traction here. Yeah. And I put out stuff and, you know, I'm putting stuff out that I like, you know, like I'm putting out transformers that, you know, right. there's a poor group that love it, but there's also a lot of people who come to my page that just want to see DC stuff. Right. But I'm still going to put it out because it's, it's yeah, for it's me. Your page and they're beautiful. And, and so it, it just snowballs, but you get into this, okay, well, you're starting to look at the numbers. The numbers are starting to rise. You kind of get yeah. that little high from, oh, yeah. from it. And I guess DC Direct, like, I got a ding. They said they posted one of my photos. And I'm like, really? And then I look, and it was the Green Lantern, Sinestro, DC uh, Centrals. And then from that point on, it just skyrocketed. Like, I shot up to, like, 3,000, like, really quickly. Congratulations, dude. That's amazing. I mean, dude, those pictures, were, they're awesome. Like yeah. you mentioned earlier, hopefully one day you'll be able to parlay this into maybe a professional gig with DC yeah. or whatever it may be, you know? So, I, so you it just kind of snowballed. Over? Sorry. Yeah, it just snowballed into that. And then it was a slow build from 3,000 to 5,000. Like yeah. I got the traction, but then I, it was, I got here at, at 5,000. Now I sit at 5,200 something, I think. And I feel like it's going to be a slow build to 6,000 and then so on. I don't, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's such an ebb and flow, bro, because I've been there. And I remember around like same thing around 6,000. It took forever to get to like 7,000, but then 7,000 to like 9,000 was super fat. Even right now, I'm stuck at like 24.6. And it's yeah, been that way for like a month. But it's like, the same thing, you have to like, oh, have I plateaued? And it's weird, yeah. you're right, you do get this little high from the numbers. And then yeah. when you see the numbers drop, you're like, why are all these people like leaving me? Yeah. <laughs> then, but then like, you get more people and stuff. and Yeah, it evens out. Um, so now that, you, do you feel pressure now though to do content every day, to always be producing? And has it become any points not fun in the last few months? Like where you've had any lulls or, you know, you know for yourself? No. I mean, I, I definitely enjoy it. I, I try to, like, over the weekend, try to take enough pictures to get me through the week. So I'm not taking pictures, like, every day. Nice. Uh, but, see, I take the pictures, but then I do a lot of Photoshop work to clean up all the dust, you know, yeah. and just try to make the figure look as best as possible. So. And I think that's, like, why you're so popular, because you make the figures look, you know, it's not about you, it's about the figure. You know, yeah. and you make them look amazing. Yeah, and one of the greatest compliments that you can get is, like, I never thought about buying this figure until I saw your photo. Right. I mean, that's – then you did your job. Exactly, exactly. And so speaking back to your photography, going back a little bit, mm -hmm. you – so when you were in high school, when you were younger, was graphic design what you wanted to do? Or how did you – what was your path from, like, that to, to photography? Well – Early on, I knew I always wanted to do something with art because it was such ingrained in me. Um, and I almost wanted to do like an art teacher. And I kind of wish I would have gone that route now looking back. Um, but yeah, I wanted to do comic book art because I was working at a comic book store. I was collecting comics. I was drawing. I mean, I have tons of, of like splash pages that I drew. I do. I'd love to see them sometime, man. I mean, some of them are bad, but some of them are good. I mean, and then I would always draw a certain way in art school, in 
in high school and my teachers were like you can't draw humans like that because we don't have lines and whatever so yeah. like I had to adapt to like that style too um but I don't know it was just the fact that like okay as I'm getting older is there going to be a career here because there's a lot of people that are fantastic artists like yeah. what happens if I don't make it in the industry and, and I was having doubts and then like so I remember um one guy from my art school came into my high school and was like, Hey, have you thought about graphic design? And I was like, no, not really. Well, you can still do this, this, and this. And I was like, okay. And then I applied and got into the art school. Um, and I loved it. It was fantastic. I still got to draw. I got to learn like computer stuff. Cause I mean, I'm strictly all Mac. So I did like all the, the Photoshop, I think was like at, Photoshop three at the time. Oh man! <laughs> Photoshop Illustrator. Uh, I, we were using Quark Express, and then, I remember Quark. And then <laughs> they still the, use Quark. Is that still around? Is that? I think it's still around. Like I, PageMaker was horrible. I hated that thing. And then I remember making the switch when InDesign first came out, and then I've been using it ever since. Yeah, we're so old, dude. We're talking about like magazine layout software, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, that's, exactly. You know, like yeah. I'm sorry. Go go ahead. No, I mean, and it just kind of like I fell in love with graphic design. Yeah. Um, and then I got a job and just kind of never looked back. So you do mainly photography now, though, for a living, though, or is it graphic design? I do graphic design actually for a living. Okay. Uh, but so the I, wedding photography is that like a side gig then? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, like, when I got into photography, I, I was lucky enough to run into some people um, in the wedding industry and I became a second shooter for them and then I fell in love with it and then I found a, a friend who wanted to photograph weddings and so we became like a team and did it for a couple of years uh, just like you know over the summer and stuff and the hard part is when you have a full-time job and then you're trying to do like editing wedding photos because it could take a while you know what I mean right. so it became my, my side hustle but that supported my photography so like everything that I made from that I put back into my photography so I got better cameras I got lighting and all of that so and I just bought a new camera so hopefully this wedding season kicks off next month and hopefully yeah I mean I saved up for that camera but if everything goes well that this summer should pay for that camera so that's awesome dude so with the with the graphic design, like, what do you design? Like, what kind of work do you do with that? We do um, a little bit of everything. Any, I mean, I don't really do business cards anymore, but yeah. it's, like, uh, magazines, um, like, local magazines, and uh, brochures, flyers, uh, some logo design, stuff like that. And then we do signage because our company does signage. So we'll do, like, um, vehicle wraps and just um we like right now we're doing a lot of covid stuff for hospitals so on a, on a normal non-covid year you do graphic design as your full-time job yeah you know, wedding photography as your side hustle which probably takes up every weekend in the summer i would imagine right uh not every weekend but i try not to do it every weekend but okay. yeah and then you have kids and a wife yeah. how do yeah. you how do you balance all of that and, that's and, the question <laughs> <laughs> you seem like you do it pretty well yeah, I mean, I try, like, when we first had kids, we said no TV while we're there awake, you know what I mean? So we wanted to give all of our time to them. We put them to bed, then we watch our TV. Yeah. Um, and that pretty much still goes on. We don't let the boys really watch a whole lot of TV. Like, they get Saturday mornings, and they get, like, an hour or two, you know. During summers, they get morning, they get one show, I think, after lunch, and then right before bed. Dude, that's pretty impressive. I have my daughter already watching, like, uh, Mo Moana. She loves it. Yeah. You know, I just get tired. I'm like, all right, let's watch some TV, sweetheart, you know? But my boys don't re didn't really gravitate towards the superheroes. I mean, I, I don't know if it's because I tried to push it too hard or what, but they're into, like, Minecraft and, and like, video game type shows, and they watch a lot of YouTube. And, I mean, I obviously watch a lot of sure. YouTube as well. But I, I, it was something that, like, I see other kids already like watch all the Disney movies and stuff like that. I couldn't tell you the last time we watched a Disney movie That's or something. 
He was playing my my nephew. He's like eight. No, he's ten. He was into Super Heroes for a while, but now you're right. He's in Legos, Ninjago, Minecraft, yeah. like uh, uh, with the Fortnite. Yeah. It, it, well, it my was, oldest is kind of getting out of the whole toy. Like he's, you know, getting into his early tweens. Yeah. <laughs> so he's just like more into video games and stuff like that. Whereas my younger son still playing with Transformers. So. Does it uh does it bum you out a little bit that they're not so much into the geeky stuff, or is it actually more relieving because that way you don't have to like compete with them? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's true. I mean, like with I, w- I would get them Imaginex figures because that was yeah. that was their DC stuff like when they yeah. were growing up. Um, but yeah, with the Transformers, like I might buy them the figure, that, and then I might buy two. I'll buy one for me and buy one buy because yeah. I don't really want them to play with my stuff. And they never really played with any of my stuff, thankfully. You know, I just said, this is off limits, and they just kind of respected that. That's awesome. And so you have this awesome basement down there. Are they down there with you, like, playing with their stuff, or is it all? Like, they'll be down watching TV if they were watching TV or playing video games. But um, we try to stick together. Like, we, you know, whether go swimming or, like, right now I'm trying to teach them how to ride bike because they're so against it. But we're like, you need to learn it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. They want to just like, they want to watch TV and they want to play video games and they want to do kid stuff. They want to like run around the house and have fun. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. That's awesome. Well, bringing it back to toys and what you're collecting today. So I know you mentioned like, I want to talk to you about like DC Essentials, McFarland Toys a little bit. So what do you love about DC Essentials? What's, uh, what captured your, your toy interest with with that line specifically i love the the body sculpt especially like i think it's bar none the best in my opinion i mean i know a lot of people complain about those ankles i don't know if it's because people don't know how to use the ankles correctly or what but i don't ever have a problem getting them to stand you know i the first ones that i bought i did have a problem with them they kept falling over the newer ones Either I learned how to pose them correctly, or they made improvements, but they seem to stand fine. So yeah. that was my only gripe with them. Now I did have um, some Batman, or even the just the animated. The ankles were a little weak, but they're more of like the pivot kind. Yeah. And I just put like some future in that, like that pledge, and it stiffens the joint up, and then they could stand fine. Dude, I'm so nervous about ever, like, boiling my figures, putting Pledge on it, because I'm I, just so clumsy, and I'm not a detailed person. Well, I feel like I'm going to ruin it, you know? You, you saw what happened to my my uh, Wonder Woman bomb oh, that's ship. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it stuck to your head. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I had to fix that, and I still need to repaint the, the what is it, the the tool. I don't even, I'm, see, I'm such a geek, I don't even know what tools are named. Is it a wrench or something? Is it a wrench? Yeah. I think it's a plumber's wrench or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, you're a handy guy, man. You're doing hallways on the weekend. You're painting. I bet you did that Wayne Skiding back there. You know? No, actually, I didn't. The, we, had, yeah. we were fortunate enough that when we bought the house, that was here, but it was like this really dark, uh, uh, dark green. It was yeah. kind of not great. Yeah. So, but I did do the flooring. With See, look at that, dude. You're a handy guy. Yeah. yeah so. With, so with the DC Essentials, one thing that people complain about all the time, whenever I post a picture, whenever you post a picture, is that, hey, man, they just keep reusing, reusing the same body. What are your thoughts on that? You know what I mean? Like, I, so I don't care as long as we're getting the, the, the figures. Now, do I wish that there was more detailing instead of just, like, a paint app? Yeah, who wouldn't? But I'm just happy that we're getting the figures. They pose fantastic, and that's the one yeah. thing that you ask anybody that takes pictures of them. They pose, I think, easier than the McFarlane, though the McFarlane has a ton more detail and they look gorgeous. Right. That's an excellent point. I feel the, feel the same way. Like you said, Mattel did the same thing. You know, and every- Mattel got slack for that, too. So Yeah, no, it's, it's so true. Um, so you got DC Essentials. What? So when McFarlane got the license, what was your initial react- reaction from, from, from that news? Um, I was wanting to see what they look like first. And then once I saw it, I really loved the Superman, because I love the big S on the chest. Like, 
So I thought that was fantastic. I thought the body proportions were really well done. Um, Nightwing, I, I feel like his arms could be a little longer on the that, but I have really long arms, but I'm a tall guy. So, um, and that's the one thing that people complain about with DC Essentials is that the arms are too long or the neck's too long. I'm like, I don't see it because it's kind of my proportions. Like, How my, tall are you, Rob? I'm 6'2". Holy shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I never knew you were that tall, man. Yeah. So um, my arms go the same length down my almost not – obviously, I'd say it's a little past midpoint on my thigh my arms go to. So, like, the DC Essentials is my body style. Now, I'm not ripped like that, but – um, yeah. you know but with the with the McFarlane stuff I love the detailing because like even the Superman has like extra detailing on the side yeah you know where the ribs are and stuff and I love that like the new stuff coming out looks fantastic uh I I just think how do you feel about so the much I'm sorry, how do you feel about the complaint about it being too Batman heavy I would love to see the Justice League and character i'm still pushing for monarch you know yeah. give me monarch and wave rider oh yeah but uh yeah i don't mind it like i'm all in i did i love dark metal knights no, it wasn't my favorite but i enjoy it you know so but i think the figures look fantastic i mean you know with, with dark metal knights i i liked it i think but i was a little confused by it i, yeah. I tried to, i read it and I don't know if I'm just old and just didn't get it, but it was it was a little hard to follow for me for a little yeah. bit. You know? I, I totally agree with you. Like, there's some times where I'm scratching my head and I'm like, uh, I got to reread this. Yeah, but I love the designs. I love Greg Capullo and what he did. So oh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited about those two. And then, so you got DC Essentials, you got McFarlane. And I'm surprised with McFarlane that you haven't bought all of them. Is that because of, like, what you were talking about earlier where you're trying to stick to things you just really like rather than being completist. Yeah, but I, as you know, I have gone back and I've been buying. And the one thing that I have to give Todd credit for, and I love that man. I've always loved that man. Yeah. But he, he makes it that if you want a figure, you're going to get it. He'll yeah. re-release it, whereas some of these other toy companies don't. And so, like, if you miss it the first or second time around, it's probably going to be there. Like, I had no problem getting all the other figures at retail that I was missing. I never, I never thought about that, dude. Wow. So, really, I, you know, huh, that's fascinating. I didn't know that about him. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I remember seeing, like, an uh, interview with him, and he's like, the point of a toy is a toy. Yeah. And I want people to enjoy my toy. So, I'm going to make sure that you get it no matter what. That's awesome. So, like, you can, like, you're still in the stores seeing Batman and Superman, that's true. You know what I mean? So I I couldn't find Nightwing, so I went on Amazon and got it at price, you know. You you don't have the Superman Unleashed though, right? The armored one? No, I didn't get the the Hellbat or the Superman. The, yeah. I don't know, like I think they look cool, but it's yeah. like one of those things that yeah, they were in like a, a page or two. Yeah. But that's it. I don't know, like I don't have a desire. To like get yeah, I'm not trying to push you, but I would just love to see your pictures of them. Oh, yeah. Superman Unleashed. It's like probably my favorite figure right now still. Okay. It's just, uh, especially in hand, I would love yeah. to see your photos of that and the Hellbat, but yeah. I'm not trying to push you. You spent a lot this month. They, they <laughs> are uh, very chunky figures for sure. And yeah, then, they're uh, great. I, I do think they look cool. The designs are great. And I mean... I, I'm the type of person that I get anxiety until I know I have the figure or like with the pre-order yeah. or something as we talked about before. So I want to be all in for this next wave or two of McFarland. Well, like you said, I'm glad that you, the way you pointed out that they're easy to get, but you're right. I, I just check Amazon, even though I have them. Also, I'm curious to see if they've jumped in price. They're easy yeah. to get and, and that makes it awesome. Yeah. So now you, you buy, I want to talk about your Japanese lines. What you okay. like there. So tell me about Mafex, SH Figure Arts. You dabbled in Beast Kingdom a little bit. You stuck your toes in there. But what what's your what do you like about the Japanese lines? What's, what's your favorite? Okay, so I have SH Figure Arts. My buddy collected the Star Wars ones, which looked fantastic. And 
I wasn't sure. I guess it was right around when Justice League came out. I wasn't sure if I was going to do the SH Figure Arts line or the Mafex line. So, like always, I decided to get both at the first. So I got a Batman and I got uh, the Batman from Mafex. Yeah. Well, the Batman from Mafex was so detailed and so beautiful. The head sculpts are just great. The only thing about it is the cape is a lot. Like, yeah, I almost have to fold it in on itself. Um, I added that extra ab crunch to the SH figure arts, and he looks fantastic now. Um, but the I, what really drove me to Mafex was the quality. I know, like, the earlier stuff, yeah. you know, people were having problems with it. And I do have some figures that are a little bit looser than others. Um, but for the most part, I think the quality has gotten so much better. Uh, actually, the only um, Marvel that I actually have displayed is that comic book Spider-Man. It's, oh, you have that one, dude. Oh, it's, it's in that top shelf. I've been the, so tempted to get that guy. Yeah. Looks, now, I don't have the black. I have the original comic one without the black lines and stuff like that. Um, but... I think they're doing the comic book justice while able to, you know, put out solid figures. The Justice League line for sure had me. The Aquaman was fantastic. The Mattel Aquaman was fantastic too. It was great. I mean, let's, that was a great figure. Yeah. Um, the Beast Kingdom was a little bit bigger. And the problem that I have with Beast King Kingdom, and I'd probably be all in, is like those those yeah. bolts or whatever those joints on the shoulders. So I love that Aquaman. It's it's like a statue it's just art, that you can articulate. Um, they're expensive, so I try not to buy as much. Um, the Marvel stuff looks fantastic. Jeez. But I'm trying to stick with DC. Um, I have I now have a complete. Justice League team for the Schneider cut. Um, I know that's what I was doing with Beast Kingdom. I had I had to, I had to complete that team. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, what about Mesco? You you don't really have any Mesco figures, do you? No, I. I know people love Mesco. I yeah. just not. Like, no. I love the dark side. I think it looks fantastic, and I think that new Wonder Woman looks fantastic. But I love Hot Toys, and I would love to own some Hot Toys. I just don't. Yeah, um, but the Mezcos just look more dollish to me. Yeah, their proportions don't seem right. Like they seem hulkier than they should yeah. be. So I don't. Think I have one and I love it, but yeah, I never. You know, I, I bought the Christopher Reeve Superman and the yeah. Keaton, the Keaton Batman. Just you know, that's that's yeah. our that's our childhood. So I have those yeah. on the way. But yeah, I'm the same way. But yeah, no, that's um. You know, I agree with you on that, dude. Like, my one friend has tons of hot toys, uh, and I think my grail piece would be the Ben Affleck Batman hot toys. Uh, it's so expensive now. I know. Uh, you know? And, like, I, I wish I had bought just bought it. I, yeah. bought, I put the deposit down, but I just, like, dude, I can't afford this right now. And I didn't, but now it's, like, three $400, I think. Yeah. So, oh, it's more than that. I think I, thought, I think I saw it, like, around $600. Uh, ridiculous, dude. Yeah. You know? Well, listen, I know we're almost out of time. I don't want to keep you going too long from... As, as you were talking, there's more stuff I wanted to ask you. But hey, I'm like, here. I can be here as long as you want me to. No, but. no, it's all right, man. You got to go you, you got to go spend time with your family. The final question I want to ask you, though, and you, you've touched on this a few times, but what are your the figures you would like to see that have not been made yet? Okay, um, for both companies? like Anything, you, anything you want. Okay, um... I'd like to see another Swamp Thing. I know the Mattel Swamp Thing. Like, I want to get that. That's yeah. on my list. Um, that San Diego Comic-Con one. Um, I'm really pushing for, like, the Monarch. Yeah. Armageddon 2001. Dude, right. Because that's, let's talk about that for a sec. Because you and I both feel that way. Yeah. About Monarch, about Wave Rider. And it's like... DC, Mattel, this is my little rant for, for a moment, Mattel went so deep with DC Universe Classics, yeah. they did not do a Monarch and a Wave Rider. They did yeah. some of the most bizarre characters. They, yeah. didn't, didn't, they did not do those guys. It drives me crazy. And, like, and then that Monarch became extant for the final uh, final hour, which I right. love that. I have every comic book of that. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I'd love to see that. I, I think that Todd could knock that out of the park. Yeah. The, the, the design of Monarch is just so fantastic. Oh, yeah, dude. And it, it's just, somebody needs to do that. Um, you can never have enough um, Green Lanterns, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, give me all the Green Lanterns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, I, I can't wait earlier, to see the, uh, the movie. I still buy the movie Green Lanterns, the Aliens. They look yeah. so good from the Mattel line. Oh, yeah. 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 Beautiful. Um. I'd like to see like a Bat family from McFarlane uh, yeah. with Damien and and everything. But I also love the the red and the red and black and yellow Robin Tim Drake. Yeah. So, um, I'm trying to th- like I'm a huge Aquaman and so like anything Aquaman really. Yeah. Um, like Tempest, you know Aqualad, any variation. Um, so many. Cool. We don't have enough mirrors. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I know, dude. She's awesome. I love the the new fifty two. Not the new fifty two. Brightest Day mirror. Yes, that is the best. Right. That's an awesome one, dude. You yeah. know, actually, I still want to get the red version, the Blackest yeah. Night version. You yeah. know, it's a beautiful one too. Yeah. All right, well, dude, let's wrap it up. But thank you so much for joining me yeah. today. Like, I really appreciate your time, dude. It's so fun talking to you, and you're just like a plethora of knowledge. On so many subjects. 